I'm turning 60 this year, and I frequently get asked what products I use on my skin, hair, and teeth. So today I'm revealing my secrets so that you can make your own all-natural products from items you probably already have in your pantry. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Dee, and this 2010 Ford Transit Connect is my tiny home on wheels that I call Ladybug Out. I'm constantly seeking ways to make my life simpler and more sustainable, especially when I'm always on the go. And as I age, I really want to make sure that the things that I am putting on my body and in my mouth really work to improve my health and well-being. So I started looking for DIY solutions for my hair and skin products that actually turned out to be more affordable and easier to make than I thought. And they actually were more effective and better for the environment. So win, 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 I guess. I use these staple ingredients as the basis for my DIY products. I have researched and chosen them for how well they work. These are the six products we are making today. I'll start with the first and easiest thing I ever made for myself homemade toothpaste. This toothpaste requires only three ingredients. Two are very common items in a pantry. Coconut oil, baking soda, and if you have it, xylitol. And I'll explain that one in a minute. Many of these also have essential oils sprinkled in them. Essential oils are made in a specific way so that they absorb into your body and really give the benefits that are intended with them. They're kind of expensive, but they're worth it. I usually just pick up a few every time that I want to restock and they last for a long time because you're only using drops for each of the different products. You can use the microwave if you have one for 30 seconds or a minute to soften the coconut oil because it will be hard at room temperature. Or you could use a double boiler. I like to use this because it's easy and I can leave the water that is simmering on low heat as a double boiler and just melt things as I need to. Then you're going to add the two tablespoons of melted coconut oil. And don't worry, it will harden as it cools. Then you're going to want to add the two teaspoons of baking soda. Then I'll add the xylitol, also two teaspoons of that. Then add about 12 to 18 drops of essential oil. I like to use peppermint essential oil. You can use cinnamon. Also clove is a nice one to add. Clove in itself is good for your mouth microbiome. And then you have your toothpaste. Next up are my skincare products. You can use witch hazel by itself. It is very pH balanced, so it is good for your natural skin barrier. It won't be too acidic or too oily. And you can just put that on a cotton pad. I use reusable bamboo pads. But lately I've been using my reusable bamboo pads soaked in this formula for a deeper cleanse. The face wash is one tablespoon Dr. Bronner's liquid soap then two tablespoons of witch hazel and four drops of tea tree oil and one cup distilled water. I use seven pads so they last me a week and then I can redo this process. And then they store very easily in a jar container, which is pretty airtight. And then you just take one out as you need it. So after using them, I usually spritz my face with water and pat it dry. It's an excellent way to save water too. If you need to remove makeup first, you can use any oil, really, olive oil, coconut oil, that gets makeup off and then you would just cleanse it and pat it dry or you can make your own makeup remover pads like this. 
For the makeup remover pads, I usually use a glass jar filled about three quarters of the way with distilled water. Add the two tablespoons of jojoba oil, one tablespoon witch hazel, and I'll mix it around a little bit. Then I soak the pads and mix them around so that the oil gets spread evenly throughout each of them. And then I just add them to the jar and they'll stay stored like this for a week. If you want to moisturize your face, you are going to need these ingredients. By swapping out different essential oils, you can customize your face cream according to your needs, whether you have oily skin or are prone to breakouts. But this is an excellent moisturizing formula for most skin types. You'll need half a cup of shea butter, one tablespoon of fractionated coconut oil, which is liquid at room temperature. I couldn't find any. You can use MCT oil or grapeseed oil, which are lighter oils as well. One tablespoon jojoba oil. Then you'll want to use rose, helichrysum, frankincense, myrrh, and any other type of essential oil scent that you like and then mix those all together. It is very liquidy right now, but it will harden into more of a creamy moisturizer as it gets to room temperature. Next up is deodorant. There are several ways to make deodorant from scratch. I started by using a little bit of coconut oil mixed with baking soda and apple cider vinegar. Sounds strange, but it actually works to deodorize and somewhat works for sweat. Those are probably all items you have in your pantry already. It works well, but if you want to level it up, you may want to add a few ingredients that I'll show you now. You're going to need four tablespoons of coconut oil, one and a half tablespoons of beeswax, one tablespoon of cocoa butter. I melt the coconut oil first and as it heats up and I pour it over the beeswax and cocoa butter, it will begin to soften the beeswax and cocoa butter. Then I'll add three and a half tablespoons of arrowroot powder. You can use baking soda if you don't have arrowroot. Then seven to 10 drops of tea tree oil. You can also add a natural scent that you like. I like a fresh citrus scent, so I add that. I sometimes store it in a tin. Since I have leftover, I'm going to put it in this glass jar and add that for later. The beeswax and cocoa butter really help to stabilize it a bit more and make it feel a little smoother on your armpits. And finally, you can tame your frizzy hair and help with hair growth with this natural hair growth spray. You'll need one tablespoon aloe vera gel. I have a little funnel for this, but I lost it and so I'm going to need to spoon it in three tablespoons witch hazel, and the main essential oils you'll want to use are rosemary and frankincense. You can add either peppermint or lavender depending on your needs. Peppermint is good if you have dandruff, and lavender soothes an itchy scalp as well. And just shake it, shake it every time you're going to use it, and spray it on your hair. It's a nice scent, and it doesn't leave your hair greasy or oily. 
You can also rub a little castor oil on your scalp at night. It really helps with hair growth. I could do a whole video on the benefits of castor oil, but it really is good for skin and hair. For more hair care tips, check out this video. If you want a PDF of the recipes that I've talked about today, check out the description below. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. This toothpaste, this toothpaste only requires, you can use witch hazel by itself. It is very well pH. If you don't want to do any of this, blah. if you don't want to do any of this, but still want a natural alternative, there is this magnesium, oh, um,